Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 5 on Heredity. This is video number 21 and we're going to be looking this time at sex-linked inheritance. So in this video we're going to look at modelling the formation of new combinations of genotypes produced during meiosis, including but not limited to interpreting examples of sex linkage. Now you remember in the last couple of videos that we were looking at autosomal inheritance and we said that at the time that autosomal inheritance involved the non-sex chromosomes, well this time we're going to have a look at those genes that are present on the sex chromosomes and how they are inherited. So we want you to be able to identify the chromosomes responsible for sex determination, which hopefully you can do already, uh, to explain why certain conditions are more common in either men or women and, and often sex linked uh, genes occur more often in men, um, but we'll see why that's the case. And also to be able to use Punnett squares as we've used previously to solve genetic problems involving sex linkage. So there is a difference between sex determination and sex linkage. We know that humans have 46 chromosomes and of those 46 chromosomes there are 23 pairs. 22 of those are autosomal. Um, not necessarily identical, but identical in the sense that they have their partner. And then the final pair could be identical. They could both be X's, which would mean uh, a female, or they could be an X and a Y, and that would mean a male. Now, these uh, chromosomes, the X's and the Y's, are known as the sex chromosomes. And included as well as a number of genes that don't really have anything to do with sex or gender. They also have, uh, particularly on the Y chromosome, a sex determining region or a gene that gets switched on um, during development of the embryo or at least of the fetus. Whilst a lot of the genes on these chromosomes determine many of the sexual characters, they are not all related to um, sexual features of the individual. So let's have a look at a couple of these in a bit more detail. When we look at sex-linked genes, what we're looking at gene is genes on the sex chromosomes that are not specifically related to sex. And one of the things that's important about this is a large number of them are located on the X chromosome. Now, the X chromosome is a relatively large chromosome, whereas the Y is a smaller chromosome. And what that generally means is that there is a region of the chromosome, of the X chromosome, that contains certain genes that have no complement on the Y. So uh, if you like, there's certain ones here and there just isn't a partner for them. So what this means is that there is a, a difference in the way that these particular genes are inherited depending on whether the individual is male or female. And this is what um, has led to this phenomenon known as sex-linked inheritance. And it means that there's certain characteristics or certain traits that occur more commonly in men or in women that don't necessarily have any direct link to sex or gender at all. So where genetic traits occur more often in one sex, we call them sex-linked traits. So that's all we're looking at here is to see whether or not when we work through our genetic examples, whether there are traits that occur more often in women than in men or more often in men than in women. And that's what we're trying to look for in this particular case. If you think about some of these things, some of the most common ones, male pattern baldness, for example, uh, colour blindness, red green colour blindness, haemophilia, there's a couple of different types of diseases that seem to be more common amongst males than they are amongst females. And if this is the case, and of course the reverse could be true as well, then we are talking about something that is at least likely to be associated with these chromosomes X and Y. One of the important um, scientists involved in giving us a lot of information about uh, genetic inheritance was Thomas Morgan, and he did a lot of work on fruit flies. One of the um, crosses that Morgan carried out actually demonstrated this whole idea of sex linkage with something that didn't have anything particular to do with the actual sex of the individuals and that is the color of their eyes. So Morgan produced a wide-eyed male from a cross between two red-eyed parents. Now that's not unusual. 
Okay, that's not unusual. We know that if those two um, parents with red eyes, if red is a dominant trait, and we know that, say, white is the recessive trait, if we do a simple monohybrid cross, then we should be able to have both of those parents as carriers producing a um, child that has white eyes. So that's okay. The fact that it was a male um, is immaterial initially because when we're working at our proportions or our probabilities from genetic crosses, we're not worried about the genders. We're just talking about a three, uh, three in four or a one in four chance of a particular trait being inherited. So what Morgan did was then he crossed this white-eyed male with a red-eyed female and all the flies had red eyes. Okay, well, in terms of um, monohybrid crosses, that's still possible. Obviously, the white-eyed male could only um, release the recessive trait. Um, and if the female was pure breeding, then and that is that only had the red-eyed gene, then you would get a whole uh, group of offspring with one dominant and one recessive allele. Morgan performed some random crosses in the F1 generation, and he found some white eyes in the F2. Which again, if we if we had um, a hybrid condition, a heterozygous condition, we would expect um, that recessive trait to actually reappear in the next generation. But they were only in males. And this was an interesting finding. Could it have happened by probability? Possibly. But the fact that they were only found in males suggested that maybe something else was going on here. Maybe this trait was linked to the gender of the flies or the sex of the flies uh, rather than just to um, random genetic probabilities when we look at each of these traits being inherited. So he explored this in a little bit more detail. We can represent these sorts of crosses, um, but we, if we're going to do it, then we need to be a little bit more uh, wary of the actual genders involved. So what that means is rather than just using the letters that we would have used in a normal monohybrid cross, now we're going to link those letters to the X and Y chromosome. So it's going to tell us not just the proportion or the probability of a particular trait being inherited, but it's also going to tell us about the um, genders ratios of these inheritance patterns. So if we're going to, again, look at trying to do this, we're going to say, OK, let's let's say the E for eyes, the capital is red and the lowercase is white. So we expect red dominates over white. Um, but we also need to take into account the, um, the particular sex involved this time. So if we look at the male, first of all, if the male is white eyes, then it must have this little gene for um, the allele for white eyes. Um, and that we've said we think is on the X chromosome. The Y, of course, um, doesn't have the counterpart. So it doesn't have anything. So we just leave it as a Y. There's no E at all um, coded for on this particular chromosome. If the red-eyed female is homozygous, so she's pure breeding for the red eyes, then that means that the only possibility in terms of her gametes is that capital E, the X with the capital E. When we do the cross, what we're going to find is that this particular um, gamete or this particular um, allele in combination with either a Y or an X is going to produce the X capital E Y for the males. So because they're X Y's, they'll be males, but they'll be males that'll have the red eyes. Uh, and the females will have, will be uh, heterozygous. So they'll have a capital E and a little e because they're X X. So they've grabbed an X from the female and the X from the male. Uh, and because the red eyes dominant over the white eyes, they will be red eyed as well. What does that then mean when we look at the next generation? Well, the males are going to produce these um, X capital E's and Y's again. So they have an X and a Y and the E, the, the gene, the allele for eye color is only carried on that um, X chromosome. But the females are going to have the X capital E and the X little E. So now we've got um, two different 
possible combinations of gametes for both the parents. So now we need a Punnett square. So let's look at the Punnett square. So here's the Punnett square. You can see the male is on this side over here and the female is up here on the top. And as a result of that, what we see is when we do our little mathematical combinations as well, as we usually do for our Punnett squares, we're going to see a 50-50 ratio of females to males, and we would expect that. We're also going to see that the females are either going to be um, two capital E's or a capital E and a lowercase e. Either way, all of the females will have red eyes. So all of our females will have red eyes. Half of them will carry that gene for white eyes, but they'll all have red eyes. The males, on the other hand, are going to show a 50-50 trait. They have a Y chromosome, which is the, the determining, um, the sex determining chromosome. But on the X chromosome, um, half of them will have the capital E, the other half will have the lowercase e. So only in this case will they have white eyes. So while white eyes appears only one in four times, it will actually appear in 50% of the males. And so you can see we have a slight change in our interpretation, not in our um, formation of our genotypes in one sense, but in the interpretation of those genotypes. And this is one of the things we looked at earlier on. Once we're doing our crosses, the one thing that can potentially change is how we interpret those genotypic ratios in terms of the phenotypic expression. How are the genes actually being expressed? So you can see that sex linkage can actually change the proportions that we have, change our conclusions regarding the proportion of um, whatever trait we're looking at in terms of males and females. And again, useful to have uh, a bit of practice at a few of these questions just to get them um, set for yourself. Thanks for watching.